Hello everyone, it's your boy Matsmus. Hope you're having a wonderful day and thank you for joining me on this video today. As you can see by the background setting, we've changed it up a little bit. We're not in my computer room, we're not outside, we are in the garage, or garage as some people call it. Now, today as you can see by the host of firearms that I brought out from my collection, we are talking a little bit about firearms or weapons cleaning. It's something that we all have to do. Yes, I know it sucks. Some people enjoy it. I personally really enjoy cleaning my firearms. I take a personal pride in looking after my equipment and so should you, especially if you're a firearms owner. If you don't look after your weapon systems, um, they're not going to function correctly and you're wasting your money. For those of you in the armed forces, you know fine well that you should be cleaning your weapon systems. And yes, it's not the greatest thing sometimes and it can be tedious. However, today's video is specifically related to a better way of cleaning, a more, I guess, efficient way of cleaning. And we know that some firearms are an absolute pain in the ass to clean. And it's time to start stepping away from the old school type of cleaning that we're used to. I'm gonna just use this as an example, okay? We're all used to using this to get into those nooks and crannies. It's not the way it should be. I'm sick of covering my little finger in cordite and carbon, uh, getting into all the nooks and crannies of my rifles just to get carbon out, especially in my service with the Canadian Army uh, as a reservist right now in the artillery. You know, even though we're in the artillery, we still use our firearms. And as you can see by my civilian C7 or SA20, we're gonna take a little bit of a look as to how to clean this a little bit differently. But there's a catch. I was very, very kindly sent a package from Breach Tool, and they are from the company known as No Half Measure Design, or NHMD. Now, Breach Tool, I'm not sure if you're aware of it before, um, are a very unique and different way of using tools to clean your rifle. It's a company that I think has kind of stepped beyond the norms of just a simple, you know, swab and, and cleaning stick. These guys have gone a little bit further. I've been approached by them and they said, hey, would you be interested in showcasing and looking at some of the products that we produce from our company Breach Tool? And I'm like, hell yes, because I am not into cleaning my rifles uh, the way that I said, obviously with a little finger. Those of you who are going into basic training and things like that, you're gonna get very accustomed to cleaning your rifle. But little things like this, little tools that I'm gonna show you today, are for sure gonna help you from pulling your hair out and making you know more work for yourself when you're cleaning your rifle. Now these are these tools that we're gonna go through today, I've never used myself before. It was sent in a package, here we go, um, and it was sent to my PO box and they said, take a look, let me, let me know what you think, and can you share it to your viewers? I'm like, hell yes. And once again, folks, uh, I don't show things that I don't think are relevant or um, relatable to you, the viewer. I don't just go and find things and say, hey, yeah, this is really cool, I, I wanna look at this. This is something that I think is very useful for you because many of you are either serving the armed forces or about to serve the armed forces or in the military or you know you even play airsoft or you just own firearms. Many of you have uh, you know hunting firearms or target practice firearms. You still got to clean them. So this is very prevalent and I, I personally would like to see a new way of cleaning rifles. So here we are, the breach tool. We're going to pop the package open and see what we have inside of here. Now I am going to push my C7 on show here, just in the background. We're actually gonna clean this today because it is dirty. I have not uh, cleaned it for a while. Bad Matsmus, but we're gonna change that today. So let's pop this open. Now, the, the cardboard boxing itself, just for reference, um, is stenciled with this really nice breach tool stamp, which I think is really cool. You know, I think it's a nice logo. I think they got a really cool logo, the old, you know, the breach chamber there. Um, so inside, let's take a look what we've got. So we've definitely got some tooling here and we have a note. Let's read the note first and foremost. So, no half measures design. There we go, they've sent me a very kind note, let's read it. It says, Dear Matt, I hope this finds you well and intact. <laughs> well, it's definitely here intact. I've included some ADV brush heads, the black ones, that are, um, that are better than the standard ones. These have been tested for over a year now and due to be on the market in November. So, it's, this video has been filmed in uh, September, so it's coming out soon. Uh, of 2019. They work great alongside the green heads to really dislodge and pick up anything you can throw at it. Awesome. And then there's a note on the back here too. It says, thanks so much for getting in touch. If you need any more info on the br uh, on, or blurb, please get uh, in touch and we look forward to seeing you and your thoughts. Keep up the great work in your videos. Kind regards, Johnny. Well, thank you so much, Johnny. And thank you so much, No Half Measure Design. I literally cannot thank you enough. This is going to be really cool. And like I said, I think this is something that is gonna be really beneficial and useful for us all here. So let's start off with what we got in here. So we have a boar snake. Now, these things 
are a lifesaver and a lot of a time saver. And I know many of you already own firearms. This isn't new to you, but if it is new to you, bore snakes are amazing. They're designed to clean out the bore of the rifling of your barrel. And they're just so much easier than using cleaning rods that you're issued in normally the Reg Force or the reserves. I know specifically in Canada, we use cleaning rods. We do not use bore snakes. Why we don't use bore snakes? There's a couple of reasons for that. First thing is these can break. And after a long, long, long and long repetitive use, they do actually break down because you've got to think of how many times rifles in the army are being used consistently over and over every single day for months, if not years, right? So the material of boar snakes breaks down. However, we're going to test this one out. I'm going to keep this in my own uh, army cleaning kit. We're going to put it through, put it through the ringer, so to speak, uh, and pull it through till it explodes. So we'll see how it goes. I have had a boar snake in the past um, from a different company. wasn't the greatest. It lasted me about three or four months. A lot of people were kind of running, I think, too heavy of a wad of flannelette through there too. So that could be part of it. So this is called the Cobra with a K, a 5.56 millimeter pull through uh, from Breach Tool. So it's a very standard, same color as the other ones that you see. Um, and it has a weighted end. So there's the weight that you're gonna push through to the other end of the barrel. And that's gonna unravel to expose the, so this is the pulling end. Obviously you're pulling this end through the barrel, right? And then in the braided side, you're having just normal thicker sized um, sort of threaded material. And in between of that, you're actually going to have some very soft copper um, ribbons, which are gonna allow you to help pull that rifling through and pull any carbon or cordite you have in there through the barrel. So this is pretty standard. It's nothing fancy. You know, we've all seen, most people have seen boar snakes before. We're gonna see how, th how long this thing lasts. And I'm gonna, definitely gonna be using this today. So we'll put that back in the baggie. And the baggie's even got its own labeling. So really nice that, I love it when companies put the effort into just labeling something with their product. Although it's in a baggie, it's telling you what it is. And to me, that's just, I don't know, it's a nice little touch. So let's get into the nitty gritty here. Uh, we have a MTP or multi-cam cleaning kit holster. Uh, sadly not CAD PAP, but that's fine. Remember, this is a UK based company. So of course, they're gonna be relating this product primarily for the British Armed Forces. Um, but of course, we can still use this in the Canadian Armed Forces. There's been no problem me pulling this out of my, out of my kit. No one's gonna give me a hard time for not having it CAD PAP. I personally love MTP. I love multi-cam. Um, so this is a small little cleaning kit here. It looks like it's gonna hold just about everything we need to have from this little kit. And at the back, it does have mold straps. Let's just open it up with the popper. That's a good thing. If I have to struggle to pull it, that's a good thing. It's not that it's a hard thing. Um, so this is an Osprey ammunition nine millimeter pistol pouch. So basically it's designed for nine millimeter ammunition. However, that's what they're using their cleaning kit for. So uh, two mold straps through the back. And this is available, I'm sure, from their, from their website. If you want to go check that out, you can. By the way, just before we go any further, if you want to check out their website, www.nhmd or novemberhotelmikedelta.co.uk. So www.nhmd.co.uk. Go check them out. No half measures designed. So there's the case. There's the, uh, the pull through. Now, this is really neat. And I like this because I've always wanted to find a little thing like this. I've had them before, but they were for like toiletries. This is a really small, compact, and that's the key here, squirty oil bottle. Now that may not mean much to many people and maybe like, yeah, well I can get that from like the toiletry section. This thing is pretty solid, like it's, it's pretty thick plastic. It's not gonna, you know, if you put this into your small pack or into your, into your attack vest or your webbing, it's not gonna get crushed. That's the one thing I hate about these big, massive CLP bottles that they issue you, or even some of the smaller ones, they're weak, cheap plastic, they break, they crack, and guess what? Then your notepad, your orders book, and everything else is gonna get covered in oil. You're gonna be pissed. Your chain of command's gonna be pissed because you've you know, got no oil for your, your weapon system. So this is pretty robust, pretty strong, uh, and it is a squirted little bottle, a little spray bottle, so you're not having to worry with brushes. Now, brushes are helpful. I'm not saying there's, you know, there's no use for brushes, but the squirter is nice because if you're just on the go, you need to give yourself, you know, your working parts a quick clean. You can just pop this out the top of your attack vest, quick pop, Squirt, 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 and off you go. So to me, really, really nice, nice, solid design. And this is like, I can't even crush it. I'm trying, like it is solid plastic, folks. You see the tips of my finger going like yellow there. That's what you want. You do not want this thing crushing on you. It's the little things that count, folks. And that to me is a big deal because I've had these little, little things before and they just fail. That is solid as a rock. It's not gonna fail, so really nice. Uh, of course, we just do have the, the standard Brillo pad. Okay, so Brillo pads are really handy to have. 
Um, be careful when you use Brillo pads and be careful where you use wire wool. You do not want to be stripping the coating off your rifle. Remember, it has its own anti-rust protective coating and painting on there. Some people go a little too hardcore with the old Brillo pads. Please be careful, be smart about it. I know when I was doing my time in the British Army, they said, do not use Brillo pads, do not use wire wool. If we catch you, you're in a world of trouble. So just something to be aware of, but we'll probably use it on mine today on a couple of bits and pieces. Um, like so, let's get into the head, the actual tools themselves. So here is the first one. So this is the actual breech tool. Here we go. I'm going to pop it open in a second so you can actually see. Uh, so it says reduce weapon cleaning time by 40%. The only tool designed to clean the barrel extension chamber and all parts of any weapon system effectively, including but not limited to the SAAT A2, <laughs> the L129A1, <laughs> Um, the AR-15, which of course we're going to look at today, or the SA-20, the M-16, and the C-7A-2. It is written on there, so I didn't, I, I didn't, I got ahead of myself here, folks. Uh, it actually tells you which uh, which weapon systems it'll clean. The C-7 is there, just at the bottom there. C-7A-2. Uh, it also says the G-36, the FN SCAR, and the FN-15. So clearly, folks, they've done a lot of study with this thing. Um, and before we go any further, I just want to show you a little bit of footage from their direct website because. They're going to be able to explain this tool a lot better than I am and a lot more efficiently. So let's just take a quick look at that promotional video and then we'll come straight back to actually cleaning my rifle. November The tool original consists of three components designed specifically to clean the toughest to get at parts of any weapon system. Proven through extensive trials since 2009, the breach tool reduces cleaning times by 40%. This also allows the end user to streamline their weapons cleaning kit for the field, reducing weight and reducing ineffective, outdated methods. During this video, we'll be using our demonstration barrel extender chamber, otherwise known as the breech chamber. This is scaled up for a better explanation of how the breech tool works. To begin with, apply oil to the area that you wish to clean stum and carbon off. Please use recommended oil for your weapon system, but the oil that we're using in this video is Bortec Eliminator and a link can be found in the description. We would also recommend using an oil spray bottle, which are available at breechtool.com. For best results, if your situation allows, we recommend waiting a bit after having applied your chosen oil. This is a perfect opportunity to clean some other parts of your weapon system. The first steps of using the tool is getting the durable nylon brush heads to do the hard work. Unlike any other attempt of a cleaning aid, the breech tool parts do not rely on threads. This allows two fixed head positions that provide a complete range of motion back and forth to scrub at the carbon and debris. As you can see, the brush head makes easy work of getting at all the faces of the chamber found behind the lugs or the locking splines. By giving it a good scrub combined with oil makes the carbon break down much quicker. At this stage, the main tool comes into its own. Unlike any other cleaning aid on the market, this part is designed specifically to get at all faces in the chamber behind the lugs. Engineered from softer 304 stainless steel, it will never damage your weapon system, being over half the Vickers hardness of your breech block. First, introduce one or two squares of flannelette or cleaning patch into the chamber. Then use the breech tool to ensure that patch gets into all parts of the barrel extension chamber. The pin tool was originally designed off the back of our research findings to eliminate the use of makeshift and not fit for purpose equipment brought in. For example, expensive dentist picks that are made of harder steel than the breech tool and even firing pins are being used to scrape away carbon from all over the weapon system. The pin tool solves this with its non-damaging precise point and flat edge to scrape carbon from the chamber groove and off other items, for example, bolt carriers, gas plugs, sight rails, and flash eliminators. Two, 
It's worth noting that the breech tool can be utilised on so much more than just the breech chamber. It was originally designed for the advanced soldier but it's now used by a wide variety of operators across all types of firearm platforms. At NHMD, the company behind the breech tool, we sell only the best kit for operators across the world. We don't cut corners in the field so don't accept less from your equipment. Every single one of our other products, including the pull through shown, has been specifically recommended, tested and used in operational theatres by UK, US, Canadian and other NATO forces, as well as recreational users and now officially branches of the British Police Firearms Units who have kindly allowed us to shoot this video. So what do you think? Clearly they have a lot better of an explanation than I would ever have with that tool. Um, we're going to pop it open though and we're going to actually take a look at this thing. Now the packaging again, really nice high quality kind of plastic container. You could actually use this as your sort of holder for it if you wanted to. Remember that it is metal and you want to still protect it. So from the elements, wet, whatever, um, you could even dab a couple of drops of oil in this thing and keep it as a sealed unit. As you can see, it's a sealed package, little holder at the top there, uh, really, really nice. So let's pop her open. And so there is an instruction manual in the back here. And as you can see, they've gone to town. They've really gone to town in terms of detail how to use this tool. Um, clearly only in English, um, not in any other language that I know of right now, but I'm sure it wouldn't be too hard to, to translate. Um, it's saying, thank you for your purchase. The tool in your hand is the result of a huge array of specialists, including soldiers across the serving ranks of the British, US and Canadian Armed Forces, the SASC, security operators, the SF community, and most importantly, you, our customer, since 2009. So they're a fairly newish company. They're not, you know, been around for too long, um, but they know what they're doing. If they've been around for, you know, 10 years, businesses don't continue striving like this after 10 years. Uh, if they're not doing something good and clearly they've got a tool here that's working so i'm going to kind of go through the uh, instructions as best as i can so inside you have the instructions we have the tool itself we also have let's just see if i can get this out of here again once again it's a good thing if it's harder to get out of the packaging because it doesn't want to fall out so these are the little heads that we saw in the video for cleaning uh looks like there's about two, four, six, eight. There's about 10 of them in there in a little baggie. Again, sealed, not just darting all over the place. So that's nice. Uh, we'll put them there and then the tool itself. So let's get the tool out here. And there we go, folks. So here is the cleaning tool itself, the breach tool right there. Now, it doesn't look like much, really, does it? It's just basically some picks and a kind of a curv curv curvature of metal and a brush head on the top. But it's the way that it's been designed not only ergonomically but engineered wise it's been engineered for rifle cleaning it's not just something that you know someone said oh well let's just get some metal and, and form it to where we want um you can also tell just the quality and the finish on the metal of this thing there's no rough edges there's no burrs there's no sort of bits to catch anything on crystal clear crisp metal cutting uh, very very nice it also has a really nice i don't know if you'll be able to see it on the camera here but a union jack stamp on there i think that's really nice with the, uh, with the branding of the actual product and the, uh, the company there, so really nice. So this is the interchangeable head that they, they showed you on the video there. So it can go back and front to allow you to get inside the upside down and the back front side of the, uh, of the breech there. Really, really handy. Now, um, let's see what else we have in here before we go any further. We're gonna strip my C7 down, or the SA20, the civilian version, uh, and we're gonna give it a go. I'm gonna try this product out. There is one more thing inside of here too. Looks like a sort of the breech tool light. Ah, okay, so we have the normal breech tool and they also sent me the breech tool light, which is something a little different. So again, it says reduce weapon cleaning by 40%. Um, I think this is more sort of a specific, not as, not as, uh, as, as complicated as this one is in terms of sort of this one sprays out into three different specific designs. This is just one straight piece of metal. So it allows you to uh, still use those heads up up and down and still allows you to kind of use the the edge for scraping and stuff honestly I've never used this before so it's gonna be a little new to me and how it works so let's take a look at the instruction manuals for the breech tool light um, I'm presuming it's very similar to the other one yeah so again very similar um, it says good choice this is the only tool designed to clean the barrel extension chamber and all the parts of the system effectively 
Um, it says, want more? The breach tool originally includes a pick tool to get you into tougher parts of the weapon system. It also collapses down into a smaller size. It can use the same brush as the head attachments, so you never lose out. Really cool, folks. I'm, I'm really liking this. Um, yeah, so this is, the, this is the light. So we're going to focus on the main breach tool, I think, right now, and take a peek and see what we think. First and foremost, before we get into actually, you know, manhandling a weapon system, oh, they also gave us some flannelette and some extra heads. Flannelette is there for cleaning the rifle itself and to pull through of the rifle. So really nice tab. So that's that's what we have in the package. A lot of cool things. Once again, thank you Breach Tool and uh, NHMD for this. I really can't thank you enough. So, okay, so first things first, before we actually try this tool out and give it uh, a good run through on the SA-20 or the civilian C7 here, we have to do our safety precautions. So we're just gonna do that quickly here. Okay, rifle is safe, 100%, no problem. So just to make you all aware, because I like to ensure that you as the viewer are comfortable that I'm doing things correctly. So we're gonna strip down the C7, um, oh, C7, I keep saying C7, but the SA-20. First things first, that I've already noticed that this is gonna be useful for, just as a combination tool at hand, all ready to go, is the edge can be used for the rear takedown pin, because on the C7, for sure, or AR-15 platforms, the rear takedown pin can be pretty hard to actually get out sometimes, and yeah, you're either using a round, which is never a good idea, by the way. Don't be using rounds to push your rear takedown pins out. Using a round or a pull-through rod or something like that. But in this case, it's already ready to go, so it's already nice to have. Uh, we're going to take the uh, trigger mechanism housing off as well. We're going to go a fairly detailed strip. I'm not going to go too hardcore here because I don't want to waste too much of your time. Um, so here we are. We're going to start off with running this end of the rifle. So we're locking out the... Uh, the main body, the barrel, and the breech itself, because these are the areas that primarily, this is what this tool has been used for. We will go through the cocking handle and the bolt assembly as well, but let's start off with what do we need to clean? What, what's the first things that I wanna use this tool for? First and foremost, you're gonna need a fairly good rag. Additionally to you know your, your uh, pull-throughs and all this sort of stuff and using the breech tool, you're gonna to want a rag just to start off getting most of the cordite and the, you know, the carbon off. Now, uh, luckily, when I did last shoot this rifle, because I haven't cleaned it for a while, I covered it in a good layer of oil, and that's always a good thing, because it allows that carbon to sort of bleed and seep into that oil, uh, and allows for a lot cleaner of an easier of a cleanup method. Um, so I'm not gonna go, like, spend the next hour showing you how to clean my rifle, because my ideal is to really go over the breech tool itself. So I've given the rough uh, sweep down and clean of the main body of the, of the rifle here. Now it's actually time to try using this tool as it was designed for, which is for the breech. That's gonna be hard for you to see. We wanna try and get into this portion here, right? This is the area that's the most difficult and the most annoying to work with when you're cleaning your rifle. It really is a pain in the butt. So first things first, um, as you can see, I'm not uh, you know, an expert using this tool. I'm sure I'm gonna to have to sort of take an adjustment to it, but for the most part, I wanna get that heavy carbon out of the breech first. And to do so, I'm gonna be using the breech tool heads. So we're gonna start with this guy. And again, it's in a nice angle, so you can actually get in there. So let's just do it. And I'm gonna try and get as close as I can to show you. So I'm gonna stick it into the side there. And I can tell you first and foremost, there you go. It's already picking up a significant amount of crud. And um, we're gonna get that off, uh, off, the, off the brush bristles here. And we're gonna go back in. Now, you could be spending close to 10, 15 minutes just trying to do this area. And this is the best, oh yeah. So this is the best way of using this, okay? So you, you get the tool at a 90 degree like that, so your hand's like this, and you can see how you got the, the thumb point in the top there to give you control. And that that angle that you got, you can see it wants to make that, that range of motion, that circular motion. You're just sticking it in there, and just the way that you can con hold, control and hold this, it is perfect. It's getting like, I'd say like, probably 250, 260 degrees worth of motion out of that 360 degree circle of the uh, of the breach, which is really nice. Now you can see, look, look how much crap it's picking up. We'll clean the bristles off. Now the key to this is being gentle with the bristles. You do not want to overdo it. Um, I do have a little bit of hops um, rifle oil here to give it a little bit of a, I guess a, a clean every time because you want to get that oil off of there. There's no point sending, sorry, not the oil. You want to get the carbon off of the, off of the head um, and just keep giving it a good clean over and over and over again because if uh, if you just keep oil and sorry you just keep carbon on there you're wasting your time so get it back in there again give it a good swipe 
Yeah, it's working pretty good. In fact, it's working really good. Now, I haven't put hundreds and thousands of rounds through this thing, but I can almost guarantee you that when you're in the field, you're putting through, you know, like five, 600 blank rounds, especially through this thing, that carbon's gonna build up on that brush head pretty quick. So in doing, uh, within saying that, um, I'm going to use now the other side of the tool, the angular tool to get in there and kind of use a swab and get the, so we've got the majority of the carbon out. Now I'm gonna use the swab inside of there to kind of, uh, you know, give it a bit more of a cleaning with the uh, softer material. Now, I haven't put hundreds of thousands of rounds through this thing, but you do also have the ability to use this pick tool, as you've shown in the video, to actually sort of scrape out that heavier carbon inside of here. Because trust me, when I say this, you put enough blanks through these things, you're gonna have to wanna scrape that. And it's a softer metal, so it's not damaging your breech. Uh, but I, want, I don't wanna do that, because I haven't put that many rounds through it, and it doesn't need it. I'm not gonna overdo it. Um, so we're gonna use, wrap the swab around the corner piece, like so. And stick it in there and give it a good old run around and again just you can just see and feel the way it's getting into those nooks and crannies that what you used to do and i'll show you what we still do to this day and what most soldiers do so there you go I'll try and show you the results there that's coming off the breach itself quite a bit of gunk quite a bit of nastiness now what most people do is they get their little pinky, and this is what your inspecting officer or your inspecting uh, NCO will do when they're cleaning your rifle, inspecting your rifle. They're gonna get their finger in there like this. And they're gonna, and it, it gets a little painful, but it gets really in there, and they're gonna pull it out. Now, as you can see, that's actually pretty damn good. Like, I have literally stuck, like, I'm not, I'm not lying to you here. There's no lying here, folks. I'm literally putting my finger all the way in there and going around and around and around and around. Okay, I can't show you it that well, but it's, it's in there, trust me, it's in that breach and very little. And that is because we just use that brush to get most of the junk out and then the brush or see the, the tool with the swabs on. Really, really cool. Um, I can see inside there, it's very, very clean for the most part so far. I've only done one round of this. So if I keep going and keep using this tool over and over and over again, I'm going to get it spotless. I can guarantee you I am. Uh, so we'll give it another quick run through with the, with the so the breech tool. We're actually gonna go the other way around this time though. So we're gonna put it this way around so that I can get to the other side. Because remember I said I only got like 260 degrees off. Now I'm going to the other side. So I'm going down the way of, of, the, of the breech going this way around. So let's just, oh, this is, this is heaven. Like why we didn't have these tools in the past, I do not know. But it's not chewing up the plastic either of these green heads. I, would, I was a little concerned that the plastic head, as I as I reef it around those lugs, was going to get damaged, and it's not. It's it's holding up really really nicely. So really really good. Now you you do have to be careful with these things because the bristles you can already see them splaying just a little bit, and that's the main concern I would have with using a tool like this is the is the bristles kind of splaying apart. But honestly, I'm being, maybe being a little too too rough with it. Um, remember that it's not there to break up that heavy carbon. That's what you want this guy for, right? This is what this guy's for, the pick, getting into that heavy carbon spot, digging it into those grooves, trying to get it out. Um, I don't have that much, so I'm not super concerned about needing to use that. Uh, but the heads, the little bristle heads that we have here, really, really handy just to get into those gaps that your NCO is gonna try and do with this little finger. So we'll give it another finger test. We call it the finger test. Get your finger in there, check it out, and again, very clean. Now, I haven't cleaned this rifle before I did this, folks. I'm not lying to you. I swear, I've not cleaned it prior to. Um, let's see what else we can look at here that it'd be very useful for. For me, I also think that it's going to be fairly good for cleaning out the top of the bolt head. So again, getting into those nooks and crannies that some tools don't allow you to. You can get rag in there and get, you know, a toothbrush. But the problem with toothbrushes is the bristles are very, very fine. They're designed for your teeth. They're not designed for metal. Uh, these bristles are a lot more rigid and a lot more hard, so they're not going to fail on you when you're trying to get all that junk out of the nooks and crannies of the bolt face. So again, really, I can see it's already getting big chunks of carbon out. And the pick, so again, not having to use other tools that aren't designed for catching that carbon, this is actually able to get in all those crannies really nicely. Very, very nice. You can see even the very tip of it is kind of curved at the end, tapered at the end. That's really nice because it allows you to almost make sort of a, um, like a, I guess I can almost call it like a, a plow that's 
halving that carbon out instead of just a straight pin. It's just got a little bit of taper at the end, so it kind of chisels so much that, that carbon away, and that's really nice to have. Um, so again, very useful bit of kit. Instead of having to get your Gerber out or whatever, if you want to take the uh, firing pin, retaining pin out, this thing literally, literally fits absolutely perfect in there to take it out. Now, you want to be careful when you're doing this. You're not, like, prying it off so it flings across the room. I've been there. It's not a good time. So there you go, firing pin, retaining pin taken out. Really, really cool. Again, you don't need to have multiple tools coming out at this point. Firing pin's coming out. Cam pin is coming out. Oh, I left this oily, damn. And the bolt's coming out, all out. And we can clean them up. Um, pull through, I think we all know how a pull through works. I'm really not gonna focus too heavily on that. I would like to look though at the breach tool light. So this is the tool that doesn't have the, the pick inside of it, it doesn't have the the, uh, there's the two tools together. So it doesn't have the pick side, it's more just of a quick one that you can have in your pocket, or you can you know, you have it in the side sleeve that you just wanna use quickly to clear a stoppage even. Be nice to clear hard stoppages that you can't get in, you know, there's a round stuck in there. This could also be exactly the same thing. But this is the, the normal breach tool with the three piece, so one for the swab end, one for the brush, and then the pick itself. This one has got the swab end and just the brush. So this is just the light. Um, it's also got some kind of, um, teeth marks in the side here for I'm presuming better grip so it doesn't slip out of your hand when you're trying to do all this stuff which is nice common sense um, other areas this is gonna be really nice for trigger mechanism right getting inside all here these are all the tough parts to get inside the breach tool light I think is where it's gonna shine because it doesn't have that more thick chunky side in the middle there that's gonna get stuck because to get into the deeper parts of your trigger mechanism housing you don't have much room so if that you know this this part here it's gonna get stuck halfway down whereas this it, it's, it's full length, right? So I can get all the way down. So again, the brush, stick it all the way down there and get right in all those nooks and crannies. Really nice. It's getting into the spring, which I always find is a, is a tough spot to get into, is the spring of the trigger mechanism, the trigger group. Very nice. And if I take the head off, I'm pretty sure this will fit all the way down. It does. So as you can see, so I can fit this all the way down into the trigger group, up and down, up and down with a swab, right? Which again, really, really nice. If you have ever tried cleaning the inside here when you get sand or crap in there, cotton swabs is the way, way to go, right? This is normally what we're using is a cotton swab. With cotton swabs, you use them once, they're done. You throw them away, you can't get any more. With this, you can put a swab or a flannelette on the end, right? So let's just get one of those. So we get a flannelette or a swab, wrap it around the sides like that, okay? Tie it off on the end, and then you can actually place that all the way down and get in there with the swab. And this allows you to not have to worry about thousands of, of uh, this rifle is fairly clean actually, um, but it, it saves you having to carry a whole host of freaking cotton swabs. Right? You don't want cotton buds having to take up room in your day pack. Instead of having just, you know, a good solid wad of these guys, right? Flannelettes or swabs, keeping them in your pack with this small little breach tool light. And then you can just reuse over and over and over again. That's really handy to have. Okay, so let's just look at this from a, from a perspective of, so we have a whole bag or box of these things, which yes, they're two-ended, or, I have a couple of packs of these. There's probably about 80 or so in here. And this, surface area, kit, making kit lean, lighter. See where I'm going with this, okay? That's why breach tool light, very handy to have. Con swabs are great for clean rifles, but this is just as effective and reusable and handy to have because cotton swabs don't have that ability to scrape that carbon, to have that angle that's gonna be robust enough to hold on to this tool. Oh, I put it on the wrong end. But it's gonna be robust enough to hold this tool in this brush, right? Cotton swabs fail after the last first couple of seconds. This is a solid piece of metal that's gonna get in there. It's not part of your cleaning kit that's, you know, part of tools that you're not supposed to use. This is designed to get into those nooks and crannies. Other key areas I think this is gonna be really handy to, to use these tools for is gonna be your barrel and the, the uh, flash eliminator or the muzzle brake at the end here. So. If you've got a big heavy duty muzzle brake, okay, and you wanna scrape that carbon off, cause some of you big guys are using like 50 cals, 338, Lapua, all that sort of stuff. This is able to get into those channels. So key things like this, okay, getting into the grooves of the, uh, of the rifle flash eliminator there and into all the grooves here. 
scraping out all that rust potentially or carbon. There shouldn't be any rust on there if you've looked after your rifle correctly. But again, very, very handy to have. Another key area for the C7 for sure is going to be anything that's involved with the release of the hand guards, right? Getting this pick, this tool, into all those grooves that the ceiling ring salt holds onto and kind of just getting a swab on there and being able to kind of brush out and cut out all that crap. Same with the breech tool light. You're able to get into all those nooks and crannies with this brush head and clean them all out. And this area carries a lot of dirt, a lot of debris. So really, really handy. One thing you do have to be aware of, now that's the first, see, it's not all pros, guys. You gotta be careful. So when using any brush, you can see that there's a piece of bristle that's actually come off of there. So whether that's the bristle head's not been adhered to correctly, maybe I'm just being too rough with it. But this area is a pinch point, so it does like to capture things. So just be careful with that, because that's foreign object debris, and you don't want that inside your rifle. If you get one of those little threads like this, inside the bolt face or inside the trigger group or somewhere like that, could cause you a malfunction. So it's one thing to be aware of. You know, it's not all pros, it's not all positives. Um, for me though, I think the key to this and the, the, the real selling factor of this tool is using it in that breach because the ability for you to be able to get something you know that can reach inside there that's not part of your finger i think is fantastic actually yeah we're using the wrong end here there we go oh going the wrong way now, i'm sure there's other features of the tool that i'm not showing you um, i would strongly encourage you if you were to get this tool to go onto uh the website and have a look or just follow the instructions but for me this is a perfect center factor just to get into those grooves of this chamber. Like for real though, it's just absolutely hands down amazing. I'm sick of using my finger. I'm sick of, you know, having cuts on the end of my fingers of trying to get all the, you know, into the bits and pieces of the rifle that are hard to get to. And this thing, is just really nice to have. There you have it folks, the breech tool. I am really impressed with it. I can't thank you guys enough um, from NHMD to be sending me this. If there's one thing I would instruct new troops to go get when it comes to cleaning, um, you know, your rifles, here's the place to go. I am not endorsed by this company. They have not paid me to do this. Other than them sending me a product to check out, there's no benefit to me other than now me being able to use this. But for the most part, I'm doing this for you guys. And I can tell you this much, this tool is very, very helpful when it comes to wanting to clean your rifle without having to go in all those nooks and crannies with tools and bits of equipment that you know shouldn't be in there. The breech tool, folks, really, really cool, really, really handy. I know some of you may think, Matt, it's just a piece of metal. Not quite, it's, it's a little bit different than that. The way in which this metal has been produced, it's not gonna scratch your metal off. The way in which these heads are replaceable, um, it's just designed very, very well. And as I said, with the little squeegee bottle there, so there she is, filled up with some uh, Bud's Gun Oil. It's one of my favorite oil brands. Uh, little squirt, squirt. I want to use it right there we go simple quick and easy lubrication for your rifle but does not crack it's not going to get crushed really robust powerful spring inside the, the the sort of pipette there or the thing that's spraying out the oil love it <laughs> to me this is alone an amazing piece of kit um, so that's it everyone. I, I really appreciate you being here on today's video. If you did enjoy this product, make sure you check out NHMD's website, www.nhmd or November Hotel Mike Delta .co.uk www.nhmdbreachtool.com is uh, is the way you want to go as well. So www.breachtool.com. Breach tool it is, folks. Uh, thank you all for joining me. I'm gonna spend the rest of my afternoon cleaning up the rest of my collection here, which of course, I've got my shotgun, which clearly needs to clean because I haven't used that for a while. Uh, my Airsoft L85, it's an Airsoft, can't really clean it. But it does have some very specific features uh, of the breech tool for the L85 because the majority of these things are actually used, the breech tool for the British Armed Forces. You can actually see in some of their videos on their website and the YouTube channel. Thank you again, everyone. I hope you have a wonderful day. And thank you again to Breach Tool. Can't thank you enough. All the best. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.